Hi everyone, Stant Latore, author of the Zombie Bible and the Ansible Stories. Uh, my members at Patreon, at a certain level, get to submit questions for me to answer during some of these weekly videos, and I've gotten a few in. I'm going to answer one tonight and then give a quick sneak preview of what I'm working on right now. So, um, <clears throat> one of my patrons asked for my quick, quick review of Guardians of the Galaxy, which I guess is on everybody's mind recently. I saw the movie recently with my wife. Um, total aside, I married the beautiful nerd girl, and I'm so glad that I did. So yeah, we see movies like Guardians of the Galaxy uh, together, and comic book movies in general. Um, so Guardians of the Galaxy, I'll share what I... Uh, loved about this movie, and also I'll share what I didn't like as much, but wasn't surprised by. So kind of a two-part, two-sided review. First, what I really loved was that this was very retro. It's a, a 1970s or 1980s movie done with 21st century CGI technology. Um, our special effects, but very much that retro feel to it. Uh, specifically, it took space opera back to the frontier, which I really like. I mean, this genre started really as... Uh, uh, a Western set in outer space, and that grittiness where your main characters are outlaws and bounty hunters, that's what made the original Star Wars tick. Um, that's what made movies like Alien tick. Um, the, the fact that you're really out there on the edge with characters living on the edge. Uh, it's something I miss in a lot of the sci-fi that gets turned out these days that doesn't really take off. I think that's part of the reason why. It just is a little too pretty. Um, so I really, really liked that this was a frontier movie and it had a whole kind of eighties aesthetic to it with the, the music and the character's backstory, but also just in the mix of high space opera with, uh, comedy in, in various registers and with this kind of gutsy sense that, uh, anything might happen. Um, so I really, really loved that. It, it reminded me in some ways of uh, The Fifth Element from the 90s, which also had kind of that um, high space opera uh, mix with, with uh, the frontier feel to it. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I wish, uh, Hollywood, I hope you're, you're paying attention and that you do more frontier space movies. Um, I think the, we need more of those. Uh, what I didn't like quite as much, uh, and it's not a, a huge complaint about this particular movie because I think I'm seeing this really throughout sci-fi uh, in, in Hollywood lately, and it's uh, that the female characters really didn't have much to do in the story. Um, Green, Green Girl was essentially the uh, support and um, love interest for the hero, and Blue Girl was the support and prop for the chief villain. And beyond that, they were just pretty bland. Uh, their backstories weren't as fleshed out as the male characters. They didn't really have uh, clearly articulated dreams that they were fighting for. They were just uh, there. Um, they had some fantastic fight scenes, and that was about it. Uh, I think I noticed this a lot more recently um, Two reasons. One, I'm, I'm raising two girls, so I tend to be very attuned to uh, women on screen. And also, I, I'm just uh, a little nostalgic. Maybe it's just midlife uh, grumpiness. I don't know. But I, I grew up with a different kind of science fiction and a different kind of character, I feel like. Um, I, you know, I miss the Leias and the Ripleys and the Sarah Connors, who really drove their own stories. Um, <clears throat> some of them were lead characters, some of them were supporting characters, uh, but they very much were in the driver's seat of their story. Uh, that, that's something I don't see a lot of with women in Hollywood sci-fi lately. Um, you know that, and, and you know, those, those were characters that were written back before strong female character those are quotation signs off off screen there. Uh, back before strong female character was a thing. You know what a strong female character is? A strong female character is the same thing as a strong male character. A character who um, has dreams and hopes and strives for them, and they're they're distinct from the dreams and hopes of people around her. Um, it, it, she's a character of strong will. And she may have obstacles, both internal and external, to overcome. But uh, she's uh, she's going to she's going to overcome them. She, you're gonna you're gonna see her fighting for the things that she wants, and that's gonna be compelling, and it's gonna be something that drives the story and the choices that she makes and why she makes them. The story hinges on them. That's what makes a strong female character, or um, uh, that's what any strong character is. 
you know that um i grew up watching and reading those kinds of characters in books that was lessa of pern and pie and far Chanier and cordelia naismith and characters like that um I, I don't see a lot of them on screen these days here and there sometimes i do see them alive and well in some books uh, i guess i just notice it more and more with each movie that passes just thinking of the movies i grew up with and that young men of my generation grew up with um, what women the screen was telling us were compelling and attractive, uh, the kinds of stories and women that the young women of my generation grew up with. And I just get to wondering what the, what my daughters will be growing up with. Uh, but like I said, that's not a complaint specifically about this movie. It's just something I notice. It's something that I think is kind of endemic in the genre right now. Uh, we've gone retro to the 80s, which I really love about this movie and certain others like it. But we haven't, but like we haven't gone retro to the type of real uh, female characters that we were lucky enough to have on screen in the 70s and 80s. So I miss that. Um, but <clears throat> that criticism aside, I love the frontier nature of this film and the just mad improvisation of it, uh, the great script writing, and you go, Marvel. And Hollywood, I hope the rest of you um, movie makers out there are paying attention. So that's Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, wonderfully entertaining movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Love Groot. I think it's probably impossible not to love Groot in the raccoon, whose name I continually forget, because he's a ra he's a brilliant um, kleptomaniac raccoon with a gun, and that's kind of stands out. Um, so switching gears, talking a little bit about what I'm working on now, I did promise my patrons and my fans a, a quick snapshot of just giving away a couple of things about Ansible 15717, the third Ansible story, speaking of space opera. I can tell you just a couple of things. One, uh, this story, our intrepid travelers transferring their minds across space and time are going to be in the bodies of plants, plant aliens, not animals. Uh, and there's just no way to say that without it sounding cheesy, but you'll have to trust me. That's going to be really, really compelling. Um, the other thing you should know is this story is a little bit longer than the first two. It's still certainly short fiction, but it is longer with a little more meat to it. Um, so hopefully you all love that. And uh, the pneumovores from the first story, those very, very chilling predators are coming back. And they will have a very large role to play both in this story and in the fourth story. The fourth story, which I've just started sketching is completely creeping me out. So I've got to stay focused and finish this third story, which I know all of you are anxiously awaiting. I'm hoping to bring the next two stories to you in November and December, and we'll keep you updated on whether, uh, you know, th that stays on schedule. But right now, all signs are positive. Uh, let's see. Um, the other news, the fifth zombie Bible story. Remember that series you can read in any order. The new book is coming out on Tuesday. Uh, actually, midnight between monday and tuesday it, it goes live so uh, go get it pre-order it uh, it's called i will hold my death close it is a fantastic story it's a retelling of the old testament story of jephthah's daughter um, there's some advanced reviews up you should read them uh the early readers think the story is fantastic i think it's a really deeply moving story uh it's a fantastic introduction to the series if you're new to it well, i've said fantastic so many times in this video that would be because it's after 10 p.m. and and the my usual internal the source has shut down completely. But believe me, it's a fin it's a great story, and and I hope you will all go pre-order it, read it, talk with me about it. Um, so that is coming down the lines toward you. Tune in next week. My next weekly video will be addressing another patron question. Uh, somebody noticed that I used a pen name and wanted to know what does Stant Latore mean and what do, where does it come from? So I will tell you. I will spill the beans. Uh, big shout out to all of my patrons on Patreon who support me in so many ways, and uh, I really couldn't do it without you. Um, you guys help me keep all the clockwork ticking uh, on my fiction, and I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll try and keep future ones a little shorter. This one, uh, I, I just, uh, part, not only is my internal the source broken down, but I'm just talking and talking and talking. So I will log off. Go get I Will Hold My Death Close. Um, see Guardians of the Galaxy. If you haven't, probably you have. You know, let me know if you disagree with me or if you loved it, hated it, liked it, disliked it. Always 
comment on my videos let me know what questions you would like me to answer in the future and i will talk to you next week